the Arca Circleston is hiding in the forest, while Stecka Storm is watching over a clearing and Langer Liv is enjoying the beach. These mystical giant trolls live in Denmark. But what is going on? And how did they get here? I think like anybody else my age, I grew up on fairy tales and folklore stories. So I think uh, that's also why I like to tell them now. And I, for me, trolls, they don't need to be like evil. They can also be good. Uh, and in my fairy tale, trolls, they are the protectors of nature. Right now, Thomas Dambo and his team of volunteers have only got eyes for this troll. So this one here is called Ivan Evivor and it's like the little, old, but very intelligent uh, troll. Ivan is one of ten trolls taking cover in the countryside. The story is a well-known Danish fairy tale. Thomas plans to finish this sculpture in ten days. At four metres in height, Ivan is one of the smaller trolls. Some of the troll sculptures can reach up to 18 metres high. I like them to play with scale and make us feel small compared to them because we are really small compared to nature. Choosing the right materials is an important part of the process. This one here is made from a pole that uh, I found just around the corner here and it's from uh, the local fishermen. They use them to tie their fishing nets on it because we are in a harbour. This one is the inscription stone, which is actually made from the same wood that comes from those rolling wagons that uh, I got a whole bunch of in the workshop. Aside from nails and glue, Thomas only uses discarded wood. He collects the material and keeps it in his studio in Copenhagen. This wooden furniture used to belong to a shop before it had to shut down. And I think that projects such as my art can maybe help alter people's perspective on trash from being something worthless to something with value. First, Thomas makes sketches of his ideas. The heads and other details are then put together in his studio. All the other parts are created out in the open. I'll give it like some kind of a pupil that I'll paint black and put on here. But it's always the last thing that I put in. Once completed, the heads are ready to set off on their journey. This one, that will go to Australia. And this one will go to the United States. Across the globe, a total of 70 upcycled trolls are hiding in places like Belgium, Puerto Rico or South Korea. When I'm traveling out in the world, I need to like find the materials locally because of course I can't bring it from Copenhagen to China. I just love to go on the treasure hunt to find those things because that makes me really happy. So it's a combination of like having people helping me organize before I arrive, but then also just going around and looking what is in the dumpsters. Despite their size, spotting a troll isn't as easy as you'd think. But thankfully there's now an interactive treasure map to help troll hunters on their quest. This family from Copenhagen is on the lookout. We have a daughter who is 10 and she really likes the uh, digital world and to get her out and about, to see a bit of the nature out here and then a treasure hunt is always great fun. On trollmap.com, hunters can access a digital treasure map. Using this map, they need to first find metal plaques, which then provide them with coordinates to the next clue. We can find. It's so nice for me to see the people who come and, and they use it. And that is the whole objective of, uh, of my project. It is to uh, lure people away from their comfort zone. Finally, at the end of the hunt, a reward awaits, like Captain Nala and his boat, or one of his other troll friends. Thomas Dambo's plan to get people outdoors and into the nature around them seems to be working.